So thank you for being here today. Thank you for showing up for the Thank you for showing up for the animals and for doing what you can today to, to spread that awareness. And I think what's, what's unique about today is it's a, it's a day of memorial, it's a day of remembrance, it's a day where we reflect and we, we think about what happens to these animals. We have so many dates across the year where we celebrate the success of what we do in this movement. We have so many days where we celebrate the successes that we're making. But today is a unique day because we reflect and we bear our respects and we pay our respects to those who will not be saved and whose life has been taken from them and whose fate has been sealed by us and our species. So I think it's important that we start by, by thinking of those who we should be thinking about. Let's think about those animals and the situations they're in now. So I hope with you as well, we can all think together. So think about those pigs. Think about that mother pig in the gestation crate whose babies have been put in the side next to her, who she'll never be able to nurture, she'll never be able to care for, she'll never be able to look after, and they'll be taken away from her and fattened up and slaughtered. Think of the grief that she endures in that gestation crate, a crate so small that she can't even turn around in them. Think about the suffering that she endures today in every second of every day until that system of oppression ends. Think about the dairy cow who's forcibly impregnated, who suffers at the hands of the farmer, who treats her as a commodity, as an object, and as a piece of property. Think about the, the joy she feels when she gives birth to her baby. And then think about the anguish and pain that she feels when her baby is taken away from her. Think of the confusion she feels when this happens year after year and the milk that she produces for her child is taken from her by machines and then fed to humans. Think about the absurdity of that situation and think about the pain that she endures as she's put in that trailer or in that truck and taken to a slaughterhouse where her life is ripped apart from her. Think about the chickens in the farms who have no space, who suffer, from being genetically modified, whose organs grow too fast and can't sustain their weight, who collapse and die and suffocate. Think about them being loaded into those trucks, crammed into those crates, hung up and shackled by their legs and dragged across a rotating blade. Think about the ones whose throats aren't cut, who are dipped into the vat of boiling water and who are boiled to death. Think about the animals in laboratories who are tied down to tables, who have been experimented on in the name of beauty and vanity and science. Think about the arrogance of our species, that we say that we test on these animals because they're like us, but that it's morally justifiable to test on these animals because they're not like us. Think about the ridiculousness of that situation where we subject animals to experiments because they're not like us, but they're similar to us. Think about the arrogance and audacity of our species that we skin animals alive so that we can wear what we deem to be beautiful on our shoulders and on our coats and on our backpacks and on key rings and on keychains and on pom-poms on hats. Think about the insanity of our species that we lead these cows on death marches across India so that we can take their skin off them, dip them in chemicals and call it leather. Think about the insanity of how we treat all of these animals that we oppress, the bears in the zoos, and the elephants in the circuses, and all the animals that we imprison, and all the animal enterprises that subject these beautiful sentient beings to a life of suffering and cruelty. Think about what they suffer today, right now in this moment, and don't ever stop thinking about it. Today is not just one day, and this feeling of memorial and of remembrance shouldn't leave us when we go home today. We should never forget about what happens to these animals. We should never forget about the suffering that they're enduring every second. And we should use that thought. We should use that imagery, that reality, to fuel us to create a different world. And we think to ourselves, there must be some reason we look at the suffering, we see the images, we bear witness to the images, and we think there must be some reason that we do this. Why do we do this? There must be a morally justifiable and ethical reason, but really, it boils down to taste and habit and convenience and tradition, not necessity, 
not because we have to to live or we have to to survive, but because it tastes good or because we've always done it or because society tells us it's fine to do. But at what point do we look at our actions? At what point do we self-reflect and say culture isn't an excuse? The food chain isn't an excuse. Our taste buds are not an excuse. Societal indoctrination is not an excuse. At what point do we self-reflect and we say to ourselves, do our excuses hold up? Do these justifications that we throw out into the air, do they really add up? Or are we doing these things because we value the hedonism and pleasure that they provide for us? If we can't morally justify these actions, then what right do we have to commit them? Do we as a species, and even as individuals, have the right to commit this amount of suffering, this level of pain, and this level of anguish onto living beings? Every single second, 3,000 lives are taken by us. 56 billion land animals a year have their lives taken by us. And as many as 2 to 2.7 trillion marine animals have their lives taken by us. They do not offer their lives. They do not give their lives to us. We take their lives. We take their bodies. We take their secretions and their flesh and their skin and their feathers and their organs. And we take everything that we want from them without their permission and without their consent. We rip their lives from them because we want to, because we value our life as being greater than them, because we position our species on a pedestal above all other species. And yet what we forget is that like all non-human animals, we are also animals. And our life on this planet is purely here by chance. And our life should be granted to us in the same way that should be granted to these animals. And in the same way that we have a pursuit for happiness and we value safety and freedom and liberty, these animals, if they were given the chance, would also want the same. And they may not have the cognitive abilities that we have, they may not have the dreams and aspirations that we have, but that doesn't matter because we have more in common than we do different. And the things that we have in common are the most important things of all. We're alive. We're sentient, we're conscious, we have families, we have the capacity to feel happiness and joy, but importantly, we have the capacity to suffer and feel pain and feel fear and feel anguish and feel scared and feel alone and feel isolated. This is what unites us. Those common traits are what unites us. And it's those traits that mean that animals should be given the respect they deserve. The respect that says, if we don't have to harm them, which we don't, then we have no right to do so. There's no such thing as ethical meat or ethical animal exploitation. All of these places, these facilities, these slaughterhouses, laboratories, these farms should be closed forever. And one day we should teach our children that as a species, we used to commit horrible atrocities onto living beings. We should tell our children that we used to do horrible things unconsciously without ever considering the impact or effect that they had. One day we will teach our children that these places have been consigned to our dark history and that they were an evil transgression that we woke up from, that we shook ourselves from, and we said to ourselves, no more will we take part in these industries, no more will we perpetuate these systems of violence and oppression. And one day we will say to our children that a small group committed to doing what they knew in their heart to be right made a difference. And that small group of people grew and grew and grew until it formed the majority and until the world was changed and a world of peace, compassion, tolerance, equality and justice was created. And we teach our children that the things that we used to do, we will never, ever do again. And this is the world that we want to create. It's not an abstract world. It's not a world that's out of our reach. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's a world that sits there in front of us. And the world is changing. Every day that goes by, the world changes. And the world that we want to create is coming closer and closer to us. History will look back 
and it'll be us that stood on the right side of that history in the same way that in the past those who stood and fought for equality and peace now stand on the right side of history. When the world looks back on the actions that we made today, we will look back with disgust and disdain, but we will remember that a small group of people carried hope in their hearts and fought for what they knew to be right, even in the face of adversity and in the face of injustice. And even though the titans that we face have infinite supplies of money and power and political influence, we have the one thing that they don't have. We have the truth, the objective reality, the truth of what happens to these animals. And that's all that we need and love, absolutely love. We have love in our hearts and we have the truth and we have a voice to speak that truth. And that is all that we need because for all of their money, all of their influence and all of their power, these industries are failing and they're crumbling and they know it. They fear us and they should fear us. For every single day, our numbers grow stronger, our conviction grows harder and our determination grows more fierce than it was the day previous. They know this. They know that times are changing. We can feel that times are changing. And that world that we want is in reaching distance. And all we have to do as a community, as a society, as a movement, is reach out, grab it, and create it. But we have to do that together. And that will only happen if we take that obligation that lies on each and every one of our shoulders and understand that the world that we want to create and the responsibilities that we have to create it do not lie on the shoulders of a few people, but lie on the shoulders of everyone and everyone who says that they care. Because when I asked you at the beginning to think of those animals in those situations, I now want you to put yourself in those situations. What if it was you? in that gestation crate. And your baby was in sight, but out of reach, who you could never nurture. And one day you had to watch as your child was taken from you. What if it was you in that farm being forcibly impregnated year after year, and after nine months your baby was ripped from you, and the only moment that you felt joy was when they were born? What if it was you in that laboratory being tied down for cruel and completely unnecessary and unscientific experiments? What if it was you in that zoo being goaded and trapped and imprisoned for your entire life? Or you in that circus being psychologically tormented and given a life of suffering to perform arbitrary tricks to provide entertainment to an arrogant and egotistical species? If it was us in that situation, we would want so ardently people who said that they cared, beings that said that they cared, to stand up and fight for us. And that is why we have that obligation today. Because if we wanted it for ourselves, then we have a moral duty to provide it for others. Our world has been decimated all around us. Our rainforests have been destroyed. Our oceans have been killed. Species have been annihilated and wiped out every single day. We don't have time. But what we can create and what we can achieve is the infinite. And the world that we want, we can create in a heartbeat if we put our minds to it, if we band together, if we do what we have to do to create that. The world is changing, I promise you. I promise you with every ounce of my body that the world that we want, we can create together. So make a vow with me today. Make a vow not just for this moment, but for every single moment in our future. Make a vow for these animals that we see here today, and make a vow for those animals who we won't see, whose lives will be taken from them. And make a vow for those animals who are yet to be brought into existence, whose life could still be saved from suffering and pain. Make a vow today that you will fight for every second of life that you are given. Make a vow today that you will never allow your comfort or your convenience to get in the way of doing what must be done. Because it is time for us to do what must be done and not what we deem to be easy. It is time for us to do what is necessary and not what makes us feel comfortable. Apathy and ignorance is what we face and the truth is all that we need. So this emotive language of fighting and of wars and of battles is unique to this movement in the sense that the fights that we have are not fights of violence or we don't perpetuate these systems of violence. 
The fight that we have is not against nations or people or culture or religion. It's against that ignorance and apathy. And all we have to do is wake people up to the truth of what is happening. And the sooner that we do that, the quicker we can bring about that change. There's an analogy that says there's a blind man walking down the street. And at the end of the street, there is a hole. On the other side of the street, there is a man who can see. If the blind man continues to walk and falls into the hole, it's the fault of the man who can see and who says nothing. We are the ones who can see. We are the ones who know what these things, what these exploitative things that we do to animals are doing not only to the animals, but to ourselves and indeed to the environment. And so every second that we stay quiet, we allow those who are unconscious, those who consume without knowing the truth, those who are blind, to continue towards that abyss, towards that hole of no return. It is up to us to speak up and warn people and show people the barbarity, the brutality, the sickening reality of what happens every second of the day. There is no such thing as humane slaughter. There is no such thing as humane animal exploitation. We must show people that these lies, these scams, this propaganda, these marketing points are there to trick us and to make us buy a product that if we knew the truth about, we wouldn't want to buy. We have that duty, that moral obligation. So make that vow with me today. Make that vow to fight for every second of life that you have. Thank you for listening.